Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to lunch. I'm Nisha Bell Isle, and this is Blaine Jeffries, as we've been introduced. And today we'll be presenting on emulating adversary actions in the operational environment with Caldera for OT. So are we ready to perform some remote system discovery? Or in this case, BACnet who is. So who is, I am, and again, Nisha Bell Isle from the Meyer Corporation. Blaine and I are the Caldera for OT squad leads. This was alluded to in the introduction, but I have some interest in adversary emulation and cyber R&D. And on the flip side, I'm interested in both programming and natural languages, Spanish, Russian, and ASL. So over to you, Blaine. Hey, everybody again. Yeah, I'm Blaine. Uh, I've been at MITRE for just over a year now, prior Air Force officer. At MITRE, I really like to focus on test beds and reverse engineering. And if you come visit us at our booth, you can check out the test bed we built specifically to demo Caldera for OT. And if you want and you're into strategy card games, feel free to <laughs> probe me about that as well. Great. So what's on our agenda for today, folks? So one, what is Caldera? And following up with that, what is Caldera for OT? What problems do we solve? Why did we build it? And how can you interact with it? So if that, to answer our first question, what is Caldera? So Caldera is an open source adversary, adversary emulation platform, scalable and built with attack as its backbone. It enables stress testing, repeatable and automated testing of your environments. And very key, it's freely available on GitHub. Looking through those main points in the middle of the slide, it's portable, accessible, and flexible. And one of the favorite uh, demos for Caldera is actually setting it up within about five minutes on a portable laptop and simply going to your web browser to view it. And on that final keynote there, it's scalable. And with that scalability, scalability, we have come to talk to you today about what we created for the OT environment for Caldera. So before we really hop into things, we have a few quick notes, some building blocks when it comes to Caldera. You can see those on the slide above. We have the agent. This is a software program that connects back to the Caldera server. That is what will be executing the abilities of in your environment. These represent specific implementations of attack tactics and techniques. They can be grouped into adversary profiles, representing the repertoire of a uh, threat actor. And through the context of an operation, we can run and execute these adversary profiles and such abilities. Then the final term on here is facts which is an identifiable piece of information that may be needed to use to execute with your payload. For example, um, IP address or a host name. So to help visualize what we're talking about, here's an example deployment. You can see on the blue section, we have a sample infrastructure where you can see a Caldera C2 server already stood up. This is interacting with the operator A workstation from which we have screenshots representing some of our back net protocol um, plugging capability. There's a live operation on this. So we'll go have a we'll go more into this detail later on in the presentation. But for now, you can see that this represents a variety of um, capability and the great UI that we have here. And finally, at the bottom, there's those different agents again, support for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS execution. So why does Caldera exist? Adversary emulation is hard. There are cost factors, time investment, and it can be highly dependent on personnel. Repeatability can also be difficult without documentation. And there's a lot of design factors that goes into this. So, Caldera is a golden ticket to making things easier. We're talking about lower cost to run, reducing time, and shifting that model from a single, a single few operators and personnel to what is our attacker model? What adversaries and abilities are we talking about? And again, it's mapped the uh, attack matrix for understanding. There's the ability to have repeatability through these designs that you can then tinker around with, rerun, and even share. So, we mentioned that there's this Caldera core. It's a core system with a modular plugin architecture. Some examples of these plugins are available on the slide. For instance, we have Atomic, Compass, and Emu. There's dozens of others, including one for training and even one called Stockpile. And what do we have from that? We have a lot of uh, powerful capabilities at our hand built together from um, different open source 
and other um, capabilities out there. And this brings to the power a lot of IT abilities. For example, you might have one for network scanning, various ones for other tactics such as exfiltration. However, one good question here is, so what about the OT environment? And I'm glad you asked, because that's a question we asked as well. How can we leverage this powerful framework in the OT environment? Well, it was on the title slide with Caldera for OT. So to answer the question of why Caldera for OT, we're really thinking about what challenges do we face? We face the challenges of there being multiple network protocols. And when there are libraries available for them, they might be scattered across different languages, Python, Go, et cetera. And we need to think about what our facts and what do we want to execute in addition to all those other factors. So some of that may resonate with you in which by building Caldera for OT, we are lowering the barrier to ICS skills. We are enabling the ability for these reliable testings. And most importantly, we're supporting threat emulation and operation and design within the OT environment. So what are these Caldera for OT plugins? You can see that we have the Caldera core in the center. And with it, we have OT Enterprise, which represents some uh, IT abilities of specific interest within the OT domain. And we have ICS protocol plugins. At the moment, we have BACnet, DMP3, and Modbus. And very key here, we are exposing native OT protocol functionality. When it comes to op adversary operations within the OT environment, we're largely looking at those built-in functions that come with the protocol. It's not necessarily just looking at exploits or vulnerabilities. So as a note here, we've essentially, we're exposing a lot of different open source libraries through the unified framework of Caldera. This is expanding an operator's toolkit to now also have attack for ICS map OT abilities in addition to what Caldera Core offers on its own. So we're looking at the impact of rapid integration within your environment. We're shifting the question of how do we set up this tool? How do we you know, demonstrate this protocol to say, let's click on availability, let's run this. So an example here is demonstrating a technique across diverse protocols, or what I'd like to dub the art of the possible. So with the power of being able to leverage these different protocols and their functions, we could, for example, look at cyber threat intelligence or real world attack. So let's say we were interested in the behavior of Havocs in the OPCDA module. Well, we can say, all right, at a protocol level, here's OPCDA, but what might that look like the fact that? So thinking from protocol to function to payload, we can think about what could automated collection look like? And in this case, we might examine back net who is. And with the power of Caldera facts, it makes it easy for us to look at what requirements, what payload do we need to go run and execute these actions of interest. So looking at these every use cases, we're really saying what challenges did we have before? And by answering those challenges, by creating these plugins, we can now say, how do we want to emulate adversary actions in our environment? How do you want to stress test both for the sake of testing our defenses and for training personnel. And we can even look like at how do we want to manipulate those variables to even perform facts at testing. So at the end of the day, these Caldera for OT plugins are extending core to help perform those and many others. And as a bit of a caveat there too, if you have custom tooling, proprietary, other tooling you're interested in, it's also possible to adapt that into the Caldera framework. So it's truly unified and again, open source. So of course, this is an ICS presentation and it wouldn't be one without the Purdue model. So I'll now be handing things off to Blaine Jeffries for a scenario walkthrough. Awesome, thanks Misha. So up on the slide here, we've got a pretty, pretty typical network layout for an operational environment with IT and OT infrastructure. So we've got our three different zones, enterprise, BMZ, and control zone. On the left of the slide, we're gonna run through a variety of Caldera abilities that you can run today with Caldera Core, and then additional abilities that we've extended out that core capability with the OT plugins. So 
As Misha mentioned earlier on in the presentation, really the core of how Caldera works and functions is by executing these abilities from agents. Caldera itself isn't an initial access tool, and that's not its primary purpose. But a lot of times what you can do to start your scenario is you might have a malicious email attachment that you just open up within the environment to get that initial access. And that will be the agent payload that will then call back to the Caldera server. And now you have your initial foothold in the network. So once we have our agent payload, you can also run abilities within Caldera Core to make sure you maintain your persistence. And again, that's just gonna be running that agent payload that calls back. So in this case, we could potentially modify the registry so that on startup that the agent payload runs again. So we have access into the enterprise zone. Now we'll move on to do some discovery tactics. So do some common discovery. Again, all this is included in Caldera Core. And it's something everyone's pretty familiar with at this point. Some account discovery, process discovery, network enumeration. In this case, with our network enumeration, we find a vulnerability within the DMZ. Well, first off, we find that there's a web server in the DMZ. And from there, we can do some potential scanning. At this point, we'll also dump creds uh, from that enterprise workstation. And fingers crossed, maybe some of those creds will be re reused uh, lower down uh, in the network. So uh, after we've identified that web server, again, we can do some further enumeration on it, scan it, find a potential vulnerability, and then ex exploit that vulnerability. Again, the way that Caldera works is running those agent payloads on the systems that you want to execute abilities from. So as long as you can transfer the agent payload and run it, you now can spawn uh, and execute abilities from that workstation. So now with an agent in the DMZ, we can now do, again, establish persistence and then do some additional follow-on discovery, hopefully discovering more assets lower into the network. So kind of a repeat from what we talked about earlier. In this case, since we're now into the DMZ, we'll discover some more assets lower in the L3, L2, L1 layers of the Purdue model. And then finally, we, in this case, we can transfer our payload maybe using native uh, remote services like RDP into the control zone. We can also establish persistence, but all of this shouldn't really be very new. You can do this a lot, uh, with a lot of tool sets. Caldera Core has this functionality already built into it. Again, like Misha said, free open source, you can download it and set up really quickly. But at this point, once you're in the con control zone, you're pretty limited with common uh, adversary emulation capabilities and even Caldera Core and what you can do impact wise. But this is really where Caldera for OT shines and starts to expose a lot of those disparate open source libraries that have a lot of functionality, but put them into one centralized location and also make it very easy to use. So now we're gonna shift gears and we're gonna hop into the Caldera UI and we'll walk through a small Caldera operation that starts at layer two. So this is the splash page for the BACnet plugin when you're logged into the Caldera web server. And this is just showing the different abilities that we currently have for the BACnet plugin. And the ones you see highlighted are the ones that we're gonna walk through today. We have some discovery capabilities, um, some collection and also impact abilities that we'll talk about. So this screen right here is the entire web page that you'd see if you were running an operation. What you see on the screen is an operation that's already been run and completed. Those green circles show you uh, the status of an ability that you run. So when you run an ability within, within Caldera, again, that C2 command has to go from the server to the agent. The agent has to run the payload, execute the ability, and then it will send the response back to the server. And while that's going on, you'll get status updates um, about the current state of the ability. At this point, you'll see they're all green because we successfully ran all those abilities. But what I'm gonna do is I'll walk through each of the abilities now, kind of show you what's going on under the hood of Caldera and what the output looks like after you've ran them. So starting off uh, with a discovery tactic, 
For BACnet specifically, we're looking at who is. Again, this is all native functionality of the protocol that we're exposing uh, in Caldera. For BACnet specifically, I'll, I will say we're using the BACnet stack, uh, if you're familiar, um, as the backbone of the plugin. So uh, for BACnet, the BACnet plugin specifically, there's a variety of payloads uh, that are run and are used. In this case, you'll see the payload here is BACWI. In this case, it doesn't take any parameters. You're just running that payload. And Caldera under the hood, when you say, hey, I want to run this ability, it's going to transfer that payload for you and run it. And you can even do cleanup uh, if you want to and automatically remove the payload or even do some uh, uh, log cleanup as well. But in the output here, you'll see we find some critical information about uh, a single BACnet device that's on the subnet with uh, the ID 200, 121. And we can use that information uh, to, for our follow-on abilities. So moving on to the second ability, it's an epics report. And uh, it just so happens that the BACnet stack has Epix uh, functionality built into it. So we were, to create, were able to easily create this ability. The BACnet stack um, or the BACnet Epix report ability here, again, you'll see it's using a different payload, um, but it does take one parameter. And within Caldera, these are called facts. And it's important to note that you might want to rerun these abilities in the future. Maybe the first time you're kind of working through, hey, you know, what does the parameter need to be? There might be some guessing and checking going on, but once you have everything figured out, you can save all those uh, parameters locally in a fact source and load them into your operation when you start it. So that way, when you want to repeat an operation, it can be as simple as just checking boxes rather than referencing other source documents. Maybe you mistype something. So that, that's a real plus to using this capability. But in this case, uh, we run the Epics report ability and we're able to glean a lot of information about this device. In this case, it's a BACnet module for Allen Bradley uh, Micro 800 series PLC. And then we can also look at all the different properties uh, associated with um, that BACnet device. And in this case, we find some intriguing information about, about one of the analog outputs. It's called fan duty. So maybe we can uh, guess that it has, it's controlling the duty cycle or fan speed. And just with that information alone, now we can maybe do some impact and collection, further collection if we want to um, on that specific property. So let's take a look at uh, a reading and writing to that property. So now once again, we're, we pick a different ability within Caldera, we can add it to our operation. It's handling uh, all the management of the payloads under the, under the hood. Again, this is a different payload. And now you'll see there are five uh, parameters. Again, uh, we were able, were able to understand what parameters need to be included here just from that epics report. Um, and we can see we read the property and it gave us an output of zero. So now let's try actually impacting and writing to that property and then we can validate whether or not anything changed by reading it again. So write property, again, different payload. We'll try to write um, the value 100 to that property. The output in this case just tells us that, hey, the device said it acknowledged that you wrote to it. But again, we can validate. So let's read that property again and see what we get. Good news, it did change. We got 100 now. So that's just kind of a, a quick walkthrough of some of the abilities that we have included as part of the OT plugins, um, as Misha will talk about in just a second. We really highly encourage you to get, get hands-on with the plugins um, before they get publicly released. And really your only chance for that is here at SANS ICS. And so back to uh, the network diagram, just wanted to, again, summarize the additional TTPs that we exposed. Again, we talked about discovery collection and impact TTPs um, that we exposed. And again, you can have minimal impact using uh, more IT type focused abilities with Caldera Core at those lower levels um, in the architecture, but really exposing that native protocol functionality grants you a lot in terms of what you can do and, and uh, emulating 
a more advanced and realistic threat actor. Great, so thank you for that overview, Blaine. Now, try it yourself. And by that, what Blaine said, come visit us at the MITRE booth where you can go break our demo for us or rather you can hack into it. Please don't break it. So this is our portable building in a box. As you can see on the schematic, we invite you to meet the objectives of gaining entry into our physical access control system and disrupting the ventilation of HVAC. Should you choose to accept these missions, you may achieve swag within your future. And with that, what does the path forward look like? So future direction wise, we're aiming to not only expand our ICS protocol coverage, but to achieve ho more holistic coverage of both the attack and attack for ICS matrices as relevant to OT. We're looking towards OT blog posts and learning materials as relevant for Caldera and for the community. And on that community point, we highly value community engagement as with attack or pardon, as with Caldera Core, we are looking for feedback. We are actively seeking this and want to hear from you. We're looking for collaboration opportunities. So please reach out to us at otatmiter.org in person or eventually at the GitHub links, which you can see up on the screen. At some point, you'll be able to view these perhaps later in the summer and you can go through the process of even contributing yourself and helping to expand this. That's very largely where Caldera comes from, being open source and it has a bunch of contributions from not only MITRE folks, but all um, people elsewhere. So of that, I'm going to switch to this contact information slide and please feel free to take a snapshot of that. Otherwise, we are now open to questions.